So if I was to say the pairs of scissors that every crafter should have, and especially if you're a fabric artist or fabric crafter, it would be a rotary cutter, a pair, a good pair of fabric scissors, a good pair of snips, and a good pair of paper scissors, and an X-Acto knife. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I think that that's pretty much, those are pretty much essential tools, and if you take care of them, they'll last a lifetime. These are the two pairs of scissors that I like to have um, by my sewing machine. This is a pair that um, is, I like the long neck because so I can reach in with them, and they're also really, really strong, so if I need to cut through a zipper or something thick, um, I can do it with these, and I don't worry about keeping these super sharp, and love these scissors. But if they're missing from my sewing area, it makes me sad. And then this is a newer pair. Um, this is part of a set really nice scissors by Mundial, and um, these are really, really sharp. So I save these, try to be really careful and never cut through anything thick. Next I have this little portable pair. This is a new um, acquisition, but I had a pair of these when I was little. See how tiny they are? And they're called Slip and Snips, and they're made in the USA. And uh, you just, you can put them in your bag or your purse or your craft um, bag, and then go like that, and they're foldable, and they open up, and they're actually really quite sharp. Um, and these are great if you are a knitter or something, and you want to just be able to have scissors with you, but you don't want to have something sharp in your purse. So love those, just really fun kind of a toy. Okay, on to larger scissors. These two pairs are the same type of scissors. They are um, shears that have a spring-loaded action. So this is a pair, we use these for fabric, no vinyl or faux leather for these. And they have a, a little um, safety catch there. And then they have a spring. So as you cut, when you're, if you're cutting a lot, these are anti-fatigue scissors. This spring pushes them open really fast. So you squeeze down and then let go. And that way you don't have to do the opening and closing motion. So for people who have arthritis or if you're cutting a lot out by scissors, those are really handy. And then this is my pair um, that probably, if these are Fiskars, these are the nicer of the two. This is, I got these at Joann's. Um, they're called Tonic Studios. I have no idea. I've never heard of that brand before. And then um, these are my sort of mommy pair to the little baby. This is the pair of baby um, scissors that came with this. But these are Mundial, again, and they're really good quality. They weren't that expensive, but they were definitely more of an investment pair of scissors. Really, really sharp blades. Definitely, I try really hard to not use these for anything except fabric um, to keep them really sharp and pristine because the other shears I just showed you, those I'm a little bit more, I abuse those a little bit more, but these I want to keep really clean and sharp because it's nice to have super sharp scissors sometimes. And then next, we have a couple of pairs of specialty large shears. These we use all the time. They're scallop shears. If you can see the scallop on the blade. So they are by Fiskars, and they're really nice. We've been using these daily for... I'd say at least four years for a lot of our edges on our tabs and things on the purses. Um, really comfortable to use, kind of a rubberized grip in there. These are kind of hard to find. I got these at Joann Fabrics, but they don't carry them anymore. I think you might be able to get them on the Fiskars website. They're pretty pricey, but they're kind of an alternative to pinking shears, and they just make such a great edge. So love these. Use these every single day, multiple times a day. They have We have them by our uh, finishing station in our store. And then these are more classic pinking shears. Uh, again by Fiskars and I love the hot pink handle so they have the more what you might have seen your grandma or mom use or you might use that zigzag kind of shape which keeps things from raveling we don't use these that much but they're just kind of cool if you want that extra that shape or you want to keep something from raveling but definitely I would say that the scallops these guys are more popular for us for what we do so and just kind of more feminine edge okay on to my favorite cutting tool, which isn't technically scissors, but it, uh, to me it's in that category because we use it to cut fabric and paper. This is a rotary cutter. Some of you uh, might be familiar with these. It's kind of like a pizza cutter with a round blade for fabric or paper, and the blade is incredibly sharp. It's like a razor blade, so it's something to be really careful with. It's not something for kids to use, um, but if you cut a lot of, if you quilt or you cut a lot of things that you really want precise straight lines, this is an awesome tool. And the way it works is you run the blade against some sort of straight edge, um, like a quilting ruler or this is just a regular ruler and it gives you a really precise cut and you can cut through multiple layers of material. This is my favorite um, kind of rotary cutter. It's an Olfa and it's made in Japan and just really good quality, really smooth cutting. Um, it has a great safety mechanism so you can use it several ways. You can squeeze it open like this, cut things, and then let go and it automatically closes. 
you can put the safety catch on so that if you squeeze it, it can't open. So if you have kids or people who might not know what they're doing and pick it up and not realize what it is, that's a good safety tool. Or you can squeeze it open, and if you're going to be cutting a lot, you can push that red button here out, and then it'll keep it open without having to squeeze if your hand gets fatigued. So love that. Love the 45 millimeter um, size, which it says right there. Uh, you can get these in smaller sizes and bigger sizes, but for the 45 millimeter is what we use in the studio, and it works the best for us. Uh, this is a right-handed one because the blade is on the left side, so running against the uh, straight edge. We do have some lefties. Uh, Rebecca and Libby, who work for me, are lefties. So this is one that I, the lefty thing is rubbing off. But you can take the blade from this side, switch it to that side, and then it becomes a left-handed rotary cutter. So um, This is our paper rotary cutter that we use. This is also an Ulfa. It's their kind of lower end one. And I don't like it as much for fabric. Um, I'm not sure. It just, you can't quite push down as hard for it. But when we cut our wrapping paper or do paper projects, it's, it's great. And if you want to just try a rotary cutter without investing in one, this is probably about $30. You can get this. This is under $20. And this way, the way this one works is you just pull it like that. And then the blade um, opens up. And for Lefties, though, the one nice thing about this is this is you hold it as a right-handed person, but a lefty can just turn it over. You don't have to move the blade. So we just keep this dedicated for paper, and that way we don't mess up our really good blades, and they make we make them last longer because the blades are quite expensive. Okay, last but not least, the trusty X-Acto knife. This is just the really basic model X-Acto knife, pointy end, razor blade, great for detail cutting. Um, couldn't live without this. If you have an X-Acto knife or a rotary cutter, you need to have a good cutting mat. But otherwise, um, this is a great tool for paper crafts. We use this to put in our magnetic snaps in our purses. So definitely something that every crafter should probably have. But it's